Kayla, she is one of, if not the greatest American judoka ever, uh, two-time gold medalist. 2010 world champion. 2010. Uh, for senior worlds. Senior worlds. What makes Kayla special? What makes her so great? What made this champion? It's a combination of, of a lot of things. One was obviously Kayla's mental toughness, right? To, to overcome what she overcame. You know, this is a girl who, you know, let, let's, I don't want to say forget about the sexual abuse, but the, the fact that she had to go through that in life and, and learned how to co compartmentalize that and keep that off as a separate part of her brain, you know, and forget about it and move on. That took a, an incredible team to help her do that. And my dad was a huge part of th her accomplishing that. Um, so for people who don't know, we should c comment and say that Kayla had to go through trauma in her earlier life f through sexual abuse and had to overcome that through the whole process of of becoming a champion as well. Right. She, because she had zero self-esteem, zero self-worth. She was at the lowest of lows and, and um, you know, didn't even want to be on this earth, right? So she she was traumatized, obviously, for and getting her the right help and surrounding her with the right people who could help her get through that and and be by her side as she's getting through that and letting her know and reaffirming that she's doing the right thing and she made the right decision and she should have zero guilt and mm -hmm. you know this doesn't define her. It happened to her, but it doesn't define her. What defines her is what she does from now on. Mm -hmm. And then rebuilding that person to become who she became. I think the mental toughness is is a big part of it, her, her, her mind. Um, but then as an athlete, you know, she, she's a lot like Travis, you know, she's, she's a warrior. She's a fighter. You know, my dad always jokes with her, you know, he says, you're, you're a workhorse. You're not a thoroughbred. We're not going to treat you like a thoroughbred, right? You're a workhorse. So you're going to work in the way <laughs> you're going to get bigger and stronger is you're going to work harder and you're going to keep, you know, and she came to us when she was only 15. So at that time, we got her with a really good strength and conditioning coach. We did all the core Olympic style lifting. Like as her body was developing, she was getting stronger every single day. And then, you know, she had the luxury of being on the mat with, at the time I was still young enough to train and be on the mat. And I was around her weight class and Travis was able to train with her. And all we had all the top US athletes at the time training here at my school. So she got the benefit of all the best guys to train within the country. You know, and and her doing all of those rounds, you know, night in, week, night, every night, every week, every year, compiled with the best, you know, highest level she could as a girl. She got the strength, she got the technique, she got the, and then she had the coaching on top of it with my dad being on her as, you know, working her out and, you know, having the, the wherewithal to develop a strategy and a plan for her. Because when she first came here, she competed at 63 kilos, which is 138 pounds. At the time, Ronda was all, Ronda Rousey was also training here, and she was seventy kilos. So if Kayla was struggling making sixty three, so the only way to obviously the only way to still compete is to move up. But my dad said, "Well, if you move up, then you're in Ronda's weight. So let's skip mm -hmm. that weight, and you're going to go to seventy eight kilos." And he told her, "Listen, you're going to go up two weight classes." She looked at him and was like, "That's one hundred and seventy two pounds." And he goes, "Well, I don't care." Like you're already struggling making 138, you weigh 150, what's the difference? We put 20 pounds on, yeah. go to 170. So that's why she jumped two weights because she passed Ronda. Yeah. She went to the weight above so she could make the national team and she had a chance to go to the Olympics and, and all of that because we envisioned Ronda staying around till 2012. And that's also like a long-term vision because you kind of grow into that body then over time. Correct. And so you can dominate, you can learn what it's like in that weight class. You can learn to dominate that weight class, excel and then dominate. People that cut weight too hard, too long, they forget about technique because they're only worried about losing weight. They're always tired in training. They don't give 100% effort. They're not getting better. She now is just focused on getting better at judo, mm -hmm. you know, and getting bigger, getting stronger, getting more powerful. So it, I think giving her that purpose and that, that was a great call. What are some memorable or maybe the most memorable moment, Kayla Harrison moment to you as her coach? Not the most, perhaps. Let's say, what are some memorable moments? 
everybody hears the good ones, right? So everybody knows she won the she won the world championships in Tokyo in twenty in twenty ten. She was our two time Olympic champion in 2012, 2016. I'll never forget those moments, right? Because they're historic. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest moments that I like sharing this story with everybody is that in 2010, in January, Kayla was still a developing athlete. And we had a local tournament in New York. It was in Brooklyn, New York. It was called the Starrett Cup. Mm -hmm. And I knew that at that tournament that two of the Canadian girls, they were like ranked 15th or 20th in the world. They weren't superstars, but they were tough players. Mm -hmm. Both of them I knew were going to be at that tournament. Mm -hmm. So I said, Kayla, we're going to go to this tournament. You're going to compete against the Canadian girls, get some good experience, You know, figure out what you need to work on, and then we'll go home and work on some stuff. Well, she went to the tournament. There was only three girls in the weight, mm -hmm. her and the two Canadians. At that tournament, she lost both fights, right? So this is January, 2010. She lost both matches. You know, she was competitive, but certainly things she needed to work on. It was good, you know, development thing for her and for us. It also opened her mind to say, oh man, you know, cause she was already a, a, a junior world champion mm -hmm. at the time. But so now there's another level. This is a senior level, right? You gotta go up another level. Here's two girls that aren't even medalists that are beating you. So now there's more work to be done. And so I like telling that story because everybody sees the champions in the greatest moments. They don't see them when they have bad days. And could you imagine being, you know, zero and two? You feel like you feel like a failure, right? Mm -hmm. But ten months later it was Tokyo, twenty ten. She went from zero and two at Starrett, New York, <laughs> to world champion, champion two thousand ten yeah. in the motherland in Japan. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing turnaround. Event. And that's only possible if you put the, the losses in their proper context. You don't let it destroy you mentally and Correct. just keep moving forward. Correct. That's you know, so funny. Uh, so you were there in 2010 at mm -hmm. the Sarah Cup? Mm -hmm. Was Travis there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I made all those. We fought at every local. Like the mentality of our team was no tournament is beneath us. If our goal is to go to the Olympics and the Worlds and win, there's no tournament that's beneath us. We're going to get experience. We're going to fight. We're going to learn. We're going to compete. We're going to get better. You know? I actually, just as a funny little con uh, side, I was there. I competed. Really? This is one of the earlier tournaments, like the, the beginner division. Oh, no. I actually did black belt division too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the, actually, yeah, I remember that. That's when it was so early that I thought, like, I was also really strong at that time, just like physically, like powerlifting stuff. So I thought, like, it would be good experience uh, to also do uh, black belt division. And remember, it must have been actually Travis's division, which is funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, Leger brothers, yeah, is that, yeah, yeah Harry they, and Gary. They are super, they're super good and they're super dominant, but mm -hmm. I think Travis faced one of them mm -hmm. and beat them. Um, I I don't know, I just remembered, uh, it's funny how there's just like these little roads that later reconnect. Right. Uh, but yeah, there's some incredible people there. And it. I saw obviously the positive things and it's interesting that K you know, Kayla's story was also intersecting there. And that was one of the lower points for her. Another story I like to, to share is that you have to know your athletes, right? And you have to you know really get to know their psychological, what they're thinking psychologically, mentally, what's going through their head. Another story was in, in Tokyo, it was 2015, the Tokyo Grand Slam. So we had had Kayla face off against almost all the top girls in her, div in her division. She had mm -hmm. beaten everybody going into the 2016 Olympics. But at the 2015 Tokyo Grand Slam, there was a girl from Japan that she hadn't fought in a long time and she lost to the girl last time she, she fought her. So it was something we wanted her to beat this girl going into the Olympics so that she knew she could beat everybody. Mm -hmm. And it was a first round match and it was gonna be tough for Kayla, right? It was gonna be a really hard fight. And um, she had won a bunch of tournaments in a row leading up to that. So her confidence was really high, but at the same time, she didn't think she needed this fight. Mm -hmm. And she showed up to the tournament and she said, I don't think I can fight today. 
I've got a stinger in my neck. You know, I've got a stinger coming down my neck and I'm kind of sore. And the tr she didn't tell us. She went and told the trainer. She walked around. She's holding her neck. And me and my dad were like, what's up with her? I don't know. <laughs> and then, so, like, I don't know. Maybe she doesn't want to fight today. I don't know. Yeah. Right? So, all of a sudden, the trainer comes up to us. And she didn't come to us. The trainer came yeah. to us and says, you know, I, I really don't think it's a good idea that Kayla fight today. And we looked at him and like, well, your opinion doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, what's up with her? Yeah. Well, she has this thing in her neck. It's like a pinched nerve and does this. And then we talked. I said, is there a risk of her getting injured? Like, is this pain or is this risk that she's going to get injured and she's going to set her back like long yeah. time in her career? He says, no, she's not going to get injured. Just a pinched nerve. It's a little pain she's going to have to deal with. I go, okay, well, can you fix the pain? Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, I can do this and that, and I can give her a shot and the pain will go away. So, okay, then do that. Uh -huh. And so Kayla Kayla comes up, she goes, didn't the trainer talk to you? I yeah. said, yeah, he talked to us. Well, he said, I can't fight. I know, but we already talked to the trainer and <laughs> he, I love it. he said, you're good to go. Yeah. She looked at us like, and then we had to talk to her and say, listen, you're not injured, you're in pain. Because we just came from a camp. I said, you're in pain, but here's the deal. We want you to fight this girl. Why don't you go out there and beat this girl, period. I don't care, but I want to know that you can beat this girl. This is why we came. This is our last hard tournament before the Olympic Games. This is what you what we want from you. And lo and behold, she understood. She They gave her a quick shot. The rest of the world thought we were crazy making her compete. Yeah. And then she went out there. She fought. Didn't even know she was injured. No, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? She just went out there. She fought the tournament. She beat the Japanese girls. She ended up going through the whole tournament. She took a gold medal. She won the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turned but, out to be a great confidence builder. In it, 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 Yeah. Uh, and that kind of sets you up for all the chaos that can happen at the Olympic Games. And it tells you, if you can beat these girls when you're not 100% yeah. and you're not at your best, you're physically beat, mentally beat, Imagine what you're going to do when you're fresh. Well, when she was going to the Olympic Games, there's a lot. She had the mental game down. Down. <laughs> down. There wasn't a girl in that division that thought they could beat Kayla going into those games. Yeah. Not a one. They just looked <laughs> at her and went, no, not happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I mean, she's a great Olympic champion, two-time Olympic champion.